Welcome to The Lex Factor, a lawfully good podcast where we'll brief you on the business of law so you can build a better practice and capture more billable hours. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Lex Factor. It's your host, Lauren, here. Hi, and Brad Pobble, the co-host that she points out so readily. <laughs> I had to give him the cue so he knew it was his turn to speak. Last time I missed. Yes. I did. I, I didn't say hello appropriately or in the right timing. So That's why this I, is not a video podcast. That's right. I'm actually really excited about today's episode. We have Director of Client Services here at Lexicon, Amanda Fowler, with us today. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. We are really glad to have you. Let me tell you why I'm really glad to have you. Um, Client services, client care, relationship building, relationship management, stuff like that, I think is so important. I think Brad feels this way too, but I think it's an area that regardless of the industry you're in, whether it's legal, business, retail, whatever, a lot of people overlook it and they don't realize at the end of the day how important it is into your bigger goals. You know, a lot of times you have goals to bring in more revenue or bring in more clients, but at the end of the day, if you're not managing them correctly and you're not managing those relationships and giving them a good experience, you're probably not hitting your numbers too. And I think it's very frequently overlooked. Absolutely. Cool. I do feel the same way. Your brand is what it's built on. Yes. And it's every interaction that you have with somebody, whether it's the person on the phone, the person face to face, or even your coworkers. It all plays a part in it. So I do know that you're heading up three different areas. Is that correct? Yes. So what, what makes them different? What are some of the main responsibilities of the client care team? Client care is really focused on monitoring, encouraging, and promoting positive relationships to produce happy, loyal customers for all of our firms. Wow. That's a mouthful. It It is. is. What does that mean? Yeah. 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 So basically what what that means is um, they distribute surveys throughout the phases of the case to the clients. Really, they're getting the feedback on a daily basis of how the clients feel in regards to their attorneys. Um, And at times, they even work as a moderator to resolve any complaints or concerns that could come up. Um, Ultimately, it's ensuring that the firm's clients are pleased with the level of service they're getting and that they're getting what they were told they were going to get when they retained. What we're trying to do is provide any feedback back to the firm, let them know what their strengths are, let them know any areas of improvement that they could be needed um, to ultimately make sure their client services are complete and that every client walks away happy. Sure. Yeah. That's a little bit of a difficult situation to be in, to be able to take those, you know, survey results, reformat them, communicate them back out to the attorneys, turn them into improvement areas. Is that difficult? How do you approach that? That's really what we specialize in. So we work hand in hand with our clients uh, to put together survey questions that's going to meet their needs and then provide them with the feedback back to them so that they can improve their processes or that gives them the the confidence that their processes are where they need to be. That reassurance. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what else? Improving processes is obviously a huge part of it. What other benefits do you see real world examples doing these surveys and talking to actual clients of the attorneys you're working with? How does that relate to long term benefits? So with one of our clients, uh, we got feedback from the their clients stating that they felt that maybe they were being nickel and dimed on their bills. So we were able okay. to use that feedback to change up our bills, to combine things together and have one total fee instead of show every copy, oh, every all letter. The line items. Exactly. Okay. So ultimately it's still the same thing, but the clients feel more comfortable with it because they don't feel that nickel and dime because yeah. they don't see it on their bill. Yeah, right. that's As a great example. Coming, that is a good example. It's you're, like when you go to the hospital and you're like, I got charged for 4,700 tissues. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> $500 for one aspirin and then they're, you know, each individual. So you're and it like, didn't even work. <laughs> you know, right. kidding. So you're like the voice <laughs> the of placebo. the client. You're, you are their voice. Absolutely. That That is what this department is. They are the voice of the customer. We're getting that feedback and we're providing it back to the firms. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, similar to attorneys, too, you basically play the role as a mediator at time to pi- time, to time. Excuse me, depending on what issues may arise. So really explain to us the importance of that issues management role with regard to compliance for law firms. 
So all of our specialists are highly trained in issue resolution. So they work with both the clients and the attorneys to resolve any concerns or disputes. So a lot of times what we see is clients are not comfortable bringing their concerns directly to the attorney, especially if the concern is about the attorney's work or their communication styles. Mm -hmm. So they'll wait till the end of that case to even address their concerns. And unfortunately, then you can't fix it because the case is over with. So we utilize our specialists to give a client an outlet to speak with, usually during that survey process. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we take that feedback from the client. We work directly with the attorney or with their management staff, and we resolve those concerns. With that, we can identify best practices that we can share with the firm, we can share with other attorneys to really improve everybody. Um, And if needed, then specialists can facilitate calls to address concerns between that attorney and the client and come up with a solution that works for everybody. Yeah. All right. I have another curveball. Don't kill me. But you said the training that you put your team through. Talk to the training a little bit. That's actually pretty, it's pretty cool that Mm -hmm. you go through that entire, I mean, I don't know how time intensive it is, what all goes through it, how often you have to, um, you know, redo training or whatnot. But talk to that. That's pretty cool. And I haven't actually heard of that in this industry before. Yeah, we really focus on the issue resolution and the calming down clients. So sometimes Mm. people get a a little irate. A little rowdy. Mm. like Yes. uh, Brad over here. No, (laughs) Just like Brad. (laughs) Just like me. Um, And, you know, we have to show empathy that we are listening to them. We understand what they're going through. But there's definitely a difference between empathy and sympathy um, and just bridging Mm. that together. So we want to make sure they know that they're being heard and that they're understood, um, but also supporting our firm yeah. at the same time. Because obviously not everybody's always going to be happy. Yeah. And, and there's a good middle ground in between there. So we, we do get some pretty intense calls. Um, and, you know, we will share those as a group and talk about how we could have handled them differently and what we could do next time um, or what was the success. Mm-hmm. And we really work as a team to develop those practices. Well, that yeah. probably takes very unique individuals to be able to, you know, be in those situations and calm those people down and really get to the point of really where the issues lie. Absolutely. We have a lot of moms. Um, <laughs> they're, they're used to, you know, Go mom. separating right. yeah. Yeah, separating the kids and, <laughs> and working on um, a resolution and, and a lot of patience. Yeah. I mean, patience is really yeah, key in this department. To, I would imagine you yeah. would have to have that. And at the end of the day, you still have a paying client. So you're working for the client. You're dealing on a primary basis with their in clients, you know, but at the end of the day, they're paying you to resolve these issues for them. So not only do you have that sympathy and empathy with the client's client, but you're ultimately working directly for that mm-hmm. client and have to manage both si- both sides of that relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our, our specialists really become the subject matter experts for that firm. So they understand the policies and procedures, and then they can use those policies and procedures. And, and sometimes it's just communicating differently mm-hmm. um, right. and, and bridging that gap. So we're gonna reenact one right now. I'm gonna be the angry client, and you be the, no. I wouldn't do that <laughs> no, to let's you. Let's do it. Don't no. put me on this the gonna spot. be amazing. <laughs> ring, ring. That was a phone. Yeah. Okay. Somebody answered. I liked how you. Somebody. <laughs> I held ring, my hand up ring. to my head if no one could see that. <laughs> so let's let's talk more about client satisfaction because that's that's definitely interesting to me. Uh, Obviously, everybody wants a positive verdict. We know that, right? Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes it does happen. But then going beyond that, how do you actually measure the client satisfaction? What metrics do you use? Things like that to to really display that you guys are making a difference. Well, first we start off by working hand in hand with the firm to develop the survey questions. And those surveys can go out at different time frames throughout the phase to identify where any issues or concerns could come in. Um, At that point, we develop what we call an attorney-client care score. And we also develop a firm referral score. So there's actually two different things we're measuring on, both the attorney and the firm overall. We can then combine those scores with our practice proficiency data, and we generate a practice quality dashboard. You should totally have another podcast about that. Yeah, that would definitely. be Lauren Phillips. Yeah. Plug, plug. <laughs> oh, we Absolutely. only do one Lauren at a time. Sorry. <laughs> we have a limit. Sorry. <laughs> Whenever you take a vacation, you the, can invite there her. There is really only one Lauren. <laughs> yeah. So um, ultimately, we use all that data together, um, and it really assists to level set the client satisfaction 
give that to the clients um, and the firm, and then they can use those decisions to work on their process improvements. Mm -hmm. So when you give it to them, is it a number scoring? Do you give information around the numbers? Like, what does the presentation look like? Yeah, so we do what we call a quarterly data review um, in which we go through each individual attorney with what their attorney's scores are as that rolls up to the firm as well. Um, So with that, we rank them. Um, And, you know, there's always a goal set by the firm and there's people above the goal. There's probably people below the goal, but then it just varies. I mean, we've had times with firms that everybody's above goal, but then you still look at those, the people that are at the bottom of that list, even though they're above goal, could they do something differently? Um, And really where those scores come into play. And it is all based off the surveys. Surveys usually range between three and five questions. Um, So they're really quick and easy to give. Um, And, you know, we rate them on a one to five or Mm -hmm. a one to seven rating. So it's not just you delivering the scores, you delivering the answers. There's always some sort of feedback, suggestions about how they can improve. Even if they're doing great already, you always take the time and make the effort to show them what else could be done and what else they can do with their results. Absolutely. And and we definitely get quotes from our uh, clients as well. So if someone says, you know, I had this great time with this attorney and they, they went above and beyond and they, they did specific things for me, we can use that. And we provide that feedback back to the managing attorneys nice. as well as the responsible attorneys because, you know, it makes them feel good that they're doing their job well. Yeah. And you're not just seeing a number. You're literally seeing somebody's words that you specifically helped. And so like, you know, it's real. You have that real life connection and you know that you truly, you know, you help somebody. You helped a real life person. You're not just getting, you know, a number back, a score back. You're actually seeing what people whose lives you have potentially changed are saying about you and how how grateful they are. Absolutely. That's really cool. So, I mean, we talked a lot about building relationships. Like I said in the beginning, I think it's so important that whatever whatever industry you're in, whether it's legal or somewhere else, your clients are happy. You know, they're more likely to come back to you. They're more likely to recommend you to a friend. Um, But at the end of the day, you're also managing this relationship with the attorney and the firm themselves. So really explain that side of the relationship and how you all work directly with the attorney and with the firm um, on on top of just, you know, reviewing scores with them quarterly and making recommendations. How are you managing and fostering that relationship? So we assign dedicated specialists to work with a specific office. That way they can build that rapport between the attorney and the specialist and ultimately learn the specific firm guidelines, their processes, um, and become that subject matter expert. That way they can give correct details and information back to the client. So sometimes when you're doing a survey and they give feedback, especially if they give a lower score, we're going to ask, well, why did you feel that way? Or is there anything we could have done differently? And based off of their responses, sometimes it's just they didn't understand the process. So we can explain that back to them, and and ultimately it goes from, you know, maybe a poor score to a high score based off that client's misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. That's Uh, a good example. Yeah, didn't think of that. uh, As a third party, you know, we are not the attorney. So we do act as a sounding board for attorneys in regards to communication and explaining those certain policies and layman's terms because mm-hmm. not everybody oh, yeah. understands Very the important. legal speak. <laughs> um, so it it's a really good bond that they can make between each other. Yeah. You know, we let our specialists reach directly out to the attorneys and have those conversations to understand what their role is better. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. I like the layman's terms. You would think, you know, I'm pretty new to the legal industry, but um, working with the clients that we currently have at Lexicon, it's amazing how many times I've maybe used a phrase that I thought was pretty standard and in their practice area, it's not at all relevant. And they had no idea what it was. And, you know, even you think it's pretty high level, pretty standard, it's not. So even within the industry, there needs to be some some layman's terminology. Right. Yeah. Be able to translate it, yeah. understand. And I like your example of, you know, really walking the customer through those processes. I mean, that would help so much in understanding it, raising up those scores. It's It's actually, I was thinking about it when you were talking about it. It's not only that, but I bet your group also has a level of retention for attorneys too because hearing the positive that people say about them, I mean, that has to feel good. I mean, every every attorney gets into the role for a reason. And so, you know, helping people, I'm sure many of them are for that. And you kind of bring that to light, whereas a person may not have said that to the attorney, too. That's actually so that's, really, yeah. Yes, absolutely. We, we've definitely had times where maybe an attorney had a bad day. Yeah. You know, maybe they didn't get the outcome in court they wanted. Yeah, maybe they lost that case. And, 
And and the specialist is really someone they can reach out to for the same reasons. Say, man, I just had a horrible day today. And then their specialist can let them know, well, you just got a 100% survey. This client is so happy with your work. And it really kind of builds them back up. Yeah, that's That's awesome. That that is really awesome. And, you know, that's it's just something that you don't think about and you don't tie directly to it. But I think it's an outcome that's it kind of, you know, it's kind of nice for you guys to make a person's day as well. Absolutely. So I do know that, you know, billing uh, influences the bottom line for our firms that we uh, represent. But, you know, understanding that if they didn't partner with a company like Lexicon that does that, what would be the impact? I mean, you have the attorney doing, taking their own calls, their own, you know, how does that influence that? I mean, how can that help that grow? How, how, what is the impact if they don't do that, if they do it themselves? Well, the impact can be pretty big. First of all, if, if the attorney is handling it all themselves, they're probably not going to do surveys on themselves. Mm-hmm. And if they do, they're not going to get honest <laughs> feedback. They might be skewed. <laughs> so exactly. your attorney yeah. wasn't the best. Right? Tell me exactly why. Was your attorney <laughs> experience good or really good? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Would you refer me now? <laughs> or they in replied, three months? <laughs> it was really good. Now, was that one really or four really? Because I just need to know for my notes. It here. was really, really good. Exactly. <laughs> really good. So, by using us, you're getting that honest feedback yeah, from the client. Um, so, and, and we look for both the positive and the negative. So, with the positive, you know, like I said before, firms can be confident in their roles Mm -hmm. and the attorneys can be confident in what they're doing every day. Um, But addressing that negative as it occurs before it goes unresolved or before the end of the case, Mm -hmm. it really can prevent those unnecessarily formal bar complaints, Mm -hmm. you know, and nobody wants to have one Mm -hmm. of those. It's so time consuming. It's not billable time. (laughs) Um, You know, you're pulling data, you're following up, you're speaking with the courts, and none of that is helping your current clients. And it's really addressing something that could have been possibly resolved prior to the end of the case. Um, So that's where you're going to see a big change in billable time. Um, it, It really gives the firm a chance to remediate any issues And ultimately, it's going to produce loyal clients. Mm -hmm. So most firms, they want their clients to be happy and loyal and go out word of mouth. I mean, that's a huge marketing technique. Um, And if you're getting that positive feedback at all times, you're going to have a better marketing campaign for it. So is there, you know, three things that you can leave us with that, uh, you know, to kind of help law firms out there to, you know, build a program like this or, you know, just give them some advice? Absolutely. Uh, The first I would have to say is that sometimes clients just want to feel heard. They want their voice and they want someone who can listen. Um, Second is the client surveys really are that voice of the customer. It's so beneficial to firms that are looking to identify and to monitor their own customer service stats. And then third I would have to say is that constant feedback is accessible as well through our software. We put comments into the software about all the conversations, and the attorneys can see that. So if we're having a conversation and they know someone's upset, the attorney can then address that as well. And I'm sorry my tone felt unprofessional right. or, mm-hmm. or this that's not how I meant it to be. And they can address that themselves too proactively so that communication is always there. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a huge part of it too. And, you know, you as, as a client's client, that in client, they feel like they're really heard and their attorney is truly listening to them and they're in tune with previous experiences. If you can say, hey, I know last time we spoke, I was super busy. I apologize. Let's go ahead and move forward on a better foot. Let's fix it. You know, right. that's really cool. Exactly. That real-time feedback. You know, like you mentioned, mentioned earlier, you said you do surveys throughout. Mm -hmm. So that gives them the opportunity to take those notes and say, oh, I need to change my tone. I need to do this different approach. And then, you know, can make it a better experience throughout. Absolutely. And then by the time the you're a magic the case is over yeah. with. That's a perfect score. It's a mom thing. They do that. They're magic. <laughs> it is a mom thing. Are you a mom? <laughs> I am. See, I told you. <laughs> yes. Brad wouldn't know. I'm, I'm not a mom. <laughs> But I do play one on television sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. We'll yeah. talk about that in the next episode. <laughs> All right, Amanda, thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully we can have you back in the studio soon. Yes, I can't wait. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. It was very nice talking to you. It was great talking to you as well. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to The Lex Factor. Lexicon takes care of business so you can take care of law. Learn how to build a better practice at lexiconservices.com.